They say the best part of travel is doing what you would ordinarily do at home in a different place. And by they, I mean me. I say that. So naturally, the day I arrived in Myrtle Bech, South Carolina, I decided to catch a screening of Solo, a Star Wars story. Couldn't have done that at home? No. Naturally, as a huge Star Wars fan, I was chomping at the bit for this movie to come out right. Eh, no. See, Star Wars for me has become a bit diluted over the last couple of years. I mean, we get a new one every year, and the last side story was... The world is coming undone. Bad. Now I get more excited for main entries, but Rogue One left a bad taste in my mouth as far as spin-offs are concerned. I mean, hell, if I'm being completely honest, even the main entries feel like an obligation at this point. And that's an interesting point to me, because we're basing our love on this franchise off of three movies that came out 40 years ago. Everything since 1999 has ranged from awful to fine. Except for The Last Jedi, that one was pretty good. But I'll be honest, in spite of that trepidation, I was a little excited originally for Solo because Lord and Miller were involved. But after some behind-the-scenes nonsense, production moving slowly due to excessive improvisation, they got axed by Lucasfilm. And ultimately, I understand that. Movies are a business, and if the correct business decision is to fire Lord and Miller, then that's what had to be done, but, you know... A way to kill the mood. So they brought in Ron Howard to finish what hadn't been done and do extensive reshoots on the film, and after everything's said and done, I gotta say, I don't know what the point of that was because this movie blows. So let's pause for a second and address a criticism that usually befalls those who critique Star Wars films. These movies are meant for kids, and you're right, they are. So I found a real-life child and asked him his opinion on Solo, a Star Wars story, which he saw with somebody else's money. Take it away, Jimmy. Where'd he go? That little booger. He saw Solo a Star Wars story with my money. This is why you can't trust children. Well, you know what? Who cares what he would have thought? The point is, the movies are not meant for him. The movies are meant for people like me. People who just like to watch the movies, they don't really explore the expanded universe, don't buy the toys, other merchandise, cosplay, are under the age of 12. No, you see, Lucasfilm is aiming for boring folk like me, and they hit the mark with this boring film. Here's a little fun fact for you. It took me watching other people's reviews of this movie to find out that I was asleep for the first 15 minutes of the movie. I was like, how is this possible? People are talking about these opening bits on Corellia? I don't remember any of that. I could have sworn it was the title cards and then Han deserting the Empire. I just thought it was like, and Medios Rest. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's a sensical opening. Sure, why not? And then people were like, oh, don't you remember the bit with the centipede woman in the water? And I was like, centipede woman in water? What, what, what like, a, like a well? Was, was she trying to steal a jewel from a 16-year-old high school girl? Uh, do they meet up with a dog man? Oh my god, was I asleep for the first 15 minutes of an Inuyasha recap? And even though I was asleep for those first 15 minutes, it didn't adversely affect my total opinion of the film, because the rest was terrible, even without the 15 minutes that I missed. To me, this movie's problems boil down to two basic elements, the look and feel. The movie looks like ass. So many shots are so heavily silhouetted that you can't make anything out. There are so many scenes that are dull and gray and just muddy visually that you can't focus on what they're trying to show you. For a while, it felt like the only color in the movie was Lando's yellow shirt. Lando, this children's card game device that helps him cheat at children's card games. Who manufactured that device, Lando? Industrial Illusions. <laughs> Gonna send you to the Shadow Realm, Lando boy. <laughs> he would, too. Lando was in possession of one of the Millennium items. And then there's the feel of the movie, which comes down to the actual Star Wars-y bits. Now, Alden Ehrenreich played Han Solo, and I only know him from his work in Hail Caesar. Other people may know him from Beautiful Creatures. The point is, I can't speak to how he is as an actor outside of this, but in this movie, he was just bizarre. It's like he knew that he didn't have the charisma to pull off a bad Harrison Ford impression, but he did it anyway? Well, what do you know? And then there's Donald Glover, who played Lando, and his bad Billy D. Williams impression fared a little bit better than the other guy's impression of Harrison Ford, 
But at the end of the day, it's still just an impression. I mean, Donald Glover didn't really do anything else with the role, which was unfortunate because I was excited to see him in the role. And then there's Amelia Clark, the mother of dragons herself, playing a character named Kiro, which is spelled weird on purpose, and that irritates me more than you know. Her character is that she has no chemistry with Han Solo. Amazing. And then there's Woody Harrelson playing a character called Tobias Beckett. Funke. His character is that he doesn't give a shit. He's completely phoning it in, and in every scene he looks bored. So, that's awesome. The point I'm getting at is that I didn't care about the characters or the stakes. Any familiar character you know is gonna survive, and none of the new characters were interesting or worth investing in. While I was watching this movie, I couldn't help but feel like I was watching an assembly line production. You know, like that scene in Attack of the Clones where they're on Geonosis and they're building the droids on the conveyor belts? It's like a product created for a mass market, but where the head should be, there's a recognizable Star Wars face. So would I recommend Solo? An exercise in frustration and futility story? Han Sol? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Whenever you write a pun that terrible, even if it's just a placeholder, it stays. So, I hope you enjoyed it, because I certainly did.